Okay, so in this video, I'll try to talk about uh, the differences uh, or, or how these three things are related to each other. AI, machine learning, and deep learning. Right? Artificial intelligence, ML machine learning, and DL deep learning. Okay, so AI enables machines to mimic human behavior. So the goal of AI is to build a robot which really looks like a, uh, which really does everything like a human, right? Well, ML machine learning is a subset of AI. Uh, you know, uh, uh, AI, which sort of uses statistical methods to enable machines to improve with experience. Okay, so and uh, when I mean statistical methods, it's not just statistics-based methods. It's basically a whole bunch of various methods. Um, uh, you know, beyond typical statistics as well. To um, uh, you know, or, or may I say, you know, beyond descriptive statistics, but more towards predictive statistics and and so on. Uh, to enable machines to improve with experience when they see more and more data and uh, with with labels so more and more labeled data okay deep learning is a subset of machine learning which makes the computation of multi-layer uh, neural networks feasible so uh, you know uh, neural networks is, is a way of doing machine learning and deep learning is is an advanced way of doing uh, machine learning using using neural networks Okay. So as this picture also shows, machine learning is a subset of AI and deep learning is, is a subset of machine learning. Deep learning sort of uses neural networks to simulate human-like decision making. Okay. So uh, AI, uh, so um, you know, uh, and, and the, this is also the uh, way in which temporarily these different fields have come up and progressed in some senses. So discussions around AI have been, uh, you know, uh, have been going on for a long period of time. In 1950s, 1960s, there was early AI uh, excitement that hey, people wanted to build robots uh, that could really behave like humans and so on. Okay. 1980s, 1990s, uh, uh, people started talking a lot about machine learning. Machine learning begins to flourish in this time period. More like applications like, you know, uh, given this, uh, this email, is it spam or not, and things of that kind. Okay. And now, from since 2010, we have been seeing that deep learning has boomed. So deep learning is that subset of machine learning um, that that is seeing a whole bunch of applications in in, in the current world. Okay. So now, you know, to, to talk about to, um, as while we talk about evolution, this is how the Google trend shows for machine learning versus deep learning. So the blue curve is machine learning, and the red curve is the deep learning one. And you can see that uh, interest in both is growing over a period of time. And um, in fact, interest over deep learning has been significantly growing over the past past few years uh, since 2012. Okay. Um, now, uh, so AI, uh, I mean, as we discussed, uh, you know, AI has been the oldest technique, machine learning is uh, more recent, and deep learning is the most recent technique um, that people have been focusing on. Okay. Now let's talk about comparisons in terms of data needs. So when you're building a machine learning model that can be done with smaller amounts of data, uh, you know, something that is probably hundreds of instances per class and things of that kind, if you're doing classification, again, when you're doing regression, a few hundred instances would be okay. okay? But deep learning needs much more data. Okay? So essentially, uh, deep learning uh, classifiers or deep learning models usually require thousands of instances at least. Okay? Uh, you know, when you have small amounts of data, there are ways of handling that. But in general, you know, broadly speaking, deep learning models do need lots of data. Okay? Uh, you know, there's something called as data augmentation that does help solve this problem of small amounts of data, but it's best to have large amounts of data. Okay? As this chart shows, you know, if you have large amounts of data, older machine learning algorithms will give you some accuracy. So on the y-axis, you have performance or accuracy, but deep learning algorithms can guarantee much better accuracy if you have large amounts of data. Okay? So accuracy-wise, DL models are usually more accurate uh, if there, when there is large amounts of data uh, and, and the task is actually complex. So if the task is simple, machine learning models and deep learning models more or less have similar accuracies on, on, on the given amount of data. But for complex tasks, larger data with deep learning gives you better results. About interpretability, uh, ML models have uh, usually have higher interpretability compared with deep learning models. Okay, and interpretability is very important. People want to know why a particular decision was made. Okay, so suppose we use deep learning model to give automated scoring to essays. Okay, so students write essays, and you want to automatically score them using deep learning models. Okay, the performance it gives in scoring is quite excellent, right? And it is near human, so human performance. But there is an issue. It does not really reveal why it has given that score. So it doesn't tell you, you know, what mistakes this guy did or, uh, and, and so on, right? Uh, while uh, using traditional machine learning, you can still come up with a lot of diagnostics as to why the decision has been made, okay? So interpretability in typical machine learning models has been high so far, but you know, deep learning models, interpretability is a little low, okay? Um, 
Now, feature engineering wise, machine learning needs a whole bunch of feature engineering. Given any domain, you need to sit with the domain expert and then figure out what features make sense. Okay? While deep learning does not. In fact, you know, the way uh, this distinction is shown in this picture is as follows. Right? When you have an input and you want to just figure out from this image whether it is a car or not, okay? A machine learning engineer would sit down and code up various kinds of features that can be extracted from images. For example, different color histograms or uh, you know brightness histogram or uh, intensity, saturation and so on. Right? Uh, or other kinds of features like sift features, hog features and whatnot. Right? So uh, a machine learning engineer has to code up those features and then apply some classifier. Now that classifier could be anything uh, like uh, typical neural networks or even typical classifiers like decision trees, SVMs and so on. And then you can come up with a, predict with a model that can predict an output car or not. Okay. Now on the other hand, deep learning model also does the same input and output. You know, it can also takes a picture and comes up with the same output, but doesn't require any feature engineering. Uh, in deep learning, the deep learning engineer can actually take the image and give it directly as input to a neural network, to a deep learning model, okay, which can actually uh, classify again the car as uh, the, the image as car or not. Okay, so feature engineering is not required in deep learning. Machine learning does need feature engineering. Right? Uh, Hardware-wise, ML can run on CPUs. Right? On typical CPUs, doesn't really require uh, lots of hardware. Uh, doesn't have hard hardware requirements. Right. While deep learning has very heavy hardware requirements, you know, learning uh, learning any reasonable deep learning model on CPUs is usually not a great way. You would, for any good model that you want to learn from a little large amount of data, you need GPUs to train these nice models. Okay. In fact, some models really take days to train even on GPUs. So deep learning is really compute intensive. Okay. Libraries, popular libraries in Python on machine learning are scikit-learn, is, is scikit-learn, right? While for deep learning, you know, all of these are reasonably popular, like TensorFlow, CNTK, Torch, PyTorch, you know, these are all popular libraries for learning deep learning, okay? In fact, you know, deep learning models, as we said, can extract features automatically, so you don't need deep, uh, you know, uh, feature engineering. And here is a visualization of what kinds of features these deep learning models can sort of discover. So for example, if you give raw data and say the task is, uh, is, is, uh, is a person prediction as to who, uh, you know, which of your friends this face belongs to in that senses, then uh, what these deep learning models do is to sort of uh, compute various kinds of features at the output of these neurons automatically. Okay? So uh, the first layer sort of gets some low level features, the middle layer gets some mid level features, the next layer gets some very high level features as to if this is a male face, female face, what age group, what eth ethnicity and so on. Okay. So that's uh, the idea is that deep learning models don't read feature engineering, they actually discover features themselves internally. Okay. So uh, now, you know, this, this picture sort of shows you uh, the same thing, but uh, more from uh, yet another application perspective. So if you have uh, uh, lots of animal pictures and you want to learn a model that can classify a particular animal uh, as dog or not, right? So, uh, or, or rather classify maybe animals across multiple classes. Uh, is this a dog or a cat or a fox or a wolf and so on, okay? You can basically just use deep learning models without coding up any features. So the input is an unlabeled image shown to the pre-trained network. So if you have trained a model, this is the image that you get. And the first layer basically extracts various kinds of simple low-level features like, uh, you know, uh, uh, curved, uh, curved lines or straight lines, lines at a particular angle, regions of a particular shape and so on. The next layer basically is able to predict higher level semantic features like tail or nose or mouth and so on of a dog and so on, right? And the next one basically can sort of group, let's say dog and wolf together um, or, or cats and tigers together and so on. And the last one can sort of really predict exactly what particular animal it is, okay? So that's how basically uh, uh, machine learning differs from deep learning. You don't need to code up these features. It automatically decides or learns these features internally, okay? So now while solving a problem using traditional machine learning algorithm, it is generally recommended that you break the problem into multiple pieces and solve one by one, okay? For example, in this case, if you were given an image and the, and the problem was to really recognize various objects in it, you would solve it in two steps in a machine learning way. You would first uh, basically figure out the bonding boxes of each of those objects, you know, so figure out that they're here there are some objects. And then for each of those bonding boxes, you would classify them into various different objects, okay? So sort of uh, first do uh, this bounding box uh, detection and then do object recogni recognition. So what particular object, exactly what object is present in it, right? 
So on the contrary, in deep learning approach, you would uh, actually do the process end to end. So you know, in deep learning, you usually don't want to split things, but do things in a joint way. Okay. So you would want to do this in an end to end manner. Um, uh, so for example, check out something called as YOLO nets, which try to do these things together. Okay. So a few more things, uh, you know, uh, execution time wise, usually a deep learning algorithm takes a long time to train, not just high compute power, but also a long time to train on a high compute machine. Okay. This is because there are so many parameters in a deep learning algorithm that training them takes longer than usual. State of the art deep learning algorithm ResNet, for example, takes about two weeks to train completely from scratch on a reasonably sized data. Uh, for example, uh, you know, let's say if you are doing it for image caption, uh, image, image classification kind of tasks. Okay. Whereas machine learning comparatively takes much less time to train, uh, ranging from a few seconds to a few hours usually, right? For usually for most of the tasks. Now let's talk about the applications of these two things, right? So machine learning is applicable all across various kinds of things. For example, you know, uh, uh, you have uh, sales, security, authentication, fraud detection, HR, recruiting, marketing, personal assistance, intelligence tools, you know, uh, finance, education, various kinds, agriculture, various kinds of industries where machine learning is applicable. And uh, uh, so, so deep learning is also applicable across uh, many of these industries, but there is a difference and the difference is as follows. Typically people try to apply machine learning to cases where there is not too many, uh, not very large amounts of data, so small data in that sense, but not very small either. So probably if there are like say hundreds or thousands of instances, you would use machine learning. Okay. Uh, and also if you don't have a lot of compute power, you would use machine learning. Okay. Um, and, uh, and if the task is simple to perform in, in some senses, it's not cognitively very complex, you would use machine learning. Okay. While on the other hand, typically people use, uh, uh, you know, a deep learning for more cognitive tasks, more cognitively complex tasks, right? So for example, this chart sort of shows various product areas where Google has been using deep learning uh, across time, right? So investments in uh, deep learning have been increasing everywhere, even at Google, right? So, um, uh, so for uh, for doing natural language understanding, for vision kind of tasks, for speech kind of tasks, which are inherently quite complicated, quite uh, uh, quite uh, you know uh, quite cognitively complex. So for those kinds of tasks, especially if you have large amounts of data, you would use deep learning in that sense. Okay. So uh, now future trends. You know, first of all, seeing the increasing trend of using data science and machine learning in the industry, it will become increasingly important for every company to sort of embrace machine learning in their business. Okay. Also, um, uh, you know, each and every individual would be expected to know the basic terminologies for sure. Okay. Now, deep learning is surprising us each and every day. You know, if you think of it, uh, uh, almost you know, every every week, every two weeks, there's a breakthrough paper which comes up in this field of deep learning. Okay. As you continue to do so in the near future, as I see it, okay, this is because deep learning is proving to be one of the best techniques to be discovered with state-of-the-art performances. You know, if you think of various speech recognition tasks or image captioning, image classification tasks, and so on. Um, in all of those tasks, deep learning has been beating any of the state-of-the-art uh, uh, methods, right? So uh, any of the cognitive, cognitively complex tasks, if you take, especially in vision and speech, deep learning is proving to be super useful. That said, even in text-based tasks, it has been uh, it has been seen to be super useful. Okay. So research is continuous in machine learning and deep learning. But unlike in previous years, where research was limited to academia, in fact, research in machine learning has and, and deep learning is explored is, is being uh, explored and is exploding in that sense is in both industry as well as academia. Okay. And more funds available than ever before, it is more likely uh, to, be, uh, to be a key thing in human development, right? So essentially, uh, um, you know, uh, deep learning is uh, what traditional machine learning is getting replaced more and more over time, okay? And thanks to deep learning, in fact, AI has a bright future. People do believe that thanks to deep learning, many of these tasks which were uh, earlier impossible to be done automatically can now be automated, okay? So therefore, thinking uh, of comparison between machine learning and deep learning, deep learning surely has a very bright future.